Hi, today we're going to be talking about GERD and how that relates to VA disability claims. Um, GERD, G-E-R-D, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease, and everything related to it. You know, can you get benefits for it? Um, how is it rated? Um, how does this relate to Gulf War syndrome? And so much more. So we hope you'll join us. Hi, and welcome back to Hill & Ponton's VA Disability Blog. I'm Natalia Joffrey, the company COO. And I'm attorney Allison Reddick. And Allison and I are going to be talking about GERD today um, and how those relate to VA benefits. So Allison, once again, can you let everyone know what GERD, G-E-R-D, stands for? So GERD is the acronym for gastroesophageal reflux disease. What this is, is it's a condition where gastric acid and partially digested food flow up from the stomach into the esophagus, which results into painful sensations that are associated with heartburn and other symptoms. And sometimes people will say, well, is it just heartburn? Because I mean, if it's just heartburn, that doesn't sound that bad, but um, it can be a little bit more than that. Yes. So uh, symptoms that can be associated with GERD are, of course, heartburn, but also also nausea. You can have pain in your chest or upper abdomen. Um, you have, can have difficulty swallowing, uh, painful swallowing. Uh, you can develop respiratory problems, and you can even vomit because of the severity of the symptoms. And I think that sometimes people... Um don't realize just how severe that pain can be. I mean, I know I've talked to people that thought they were having a heart attack and it turned out to be GERD. So it, it, it can be pretty intense. No, absolutely. It's literally acid from your stomach going up into your esophagus, which isn't built to handle the acidity and it, and it can erode it and change um, the function of it. Wow. How does it start? What are, what are some of the causes for GERD that so, you know? Basically, when you swallow food, uh, there's muscles in your esophagus that move the food down to your stomach. So at the base of the esophagus, there's a band of muscles called the lower esophageal sphincter, and it opens and closes. So it's only supposed to open when you're swallowing food. Um, the only other time it opens naturally is if you burp or belch but that's the only time it's supposed to open. What happens when you suffer from GERD is that that sphincter opens once the food has already passed and has already started to become broken down by the stomach acids and regurgitates back up into your esophagus and causes those painful symptoms. Common causes or uh, types of food you eat, uh, lifestyle choices and non-related physical orders, but the one that we see most often is that certain medications can cause as a side effect GERD. Um, there's like calcium channel blockers. There's uh, ones that uh, respiratory disorders, medications for that. That's a big one. Um, if you take um, non steroid non-steroid anti-inflammatory um, medications like ibuprofen and naproxen, uh, mm -hmm. those can irritate the lining of the esophagus and such. That's great. So, um, I mean, that's not great, but you know, it's great information. So the million dollar question, of course, that I'm going to ask you is, can you get rated? Can you get VA benefits um, for GERD? So what's interesting with GERD is that it doesn't have its own rating schedule in um, the the rule book of regulations. So uh, what they do is they use an analogous rating. Um, I think they normally use the hiatal hernia criteria for it, but absolutely you can get service connected for GERD, whether it's um, direct service connection. Let's see, I had a vet who he had stomach issues in service and um, we ended up, and he developed GERD from it, we ended up connecting that he suffered from a bacterial infection from like food poisoning. It was H. pylori bacteria, and mm -hmm. that actually caused his GERD. So that would be an example of direct service connection. Um, a lot of it would be secondary service connection, like um, 
the respiratory condition. So if you have asthma or COPD, um, service connected, and you take medications that GERD is a side effect, you can get service connected secondary okay. that way. Okay, good. So in a nutshell, yes, you can get secondary benefits for this condition. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what sort of evidence do you find is helpful to prove these claims? So I would definitely say a nexus statement from a doctor, getting your doctor to one, actually diagnose you with GERD and to say, yes, this medication is a side effect of it and is causing the GERD. Um, a statement of your symptoms to show the severity and, and the symptoms that you suffer from because the way it's rated is based off of how many symptoms you're having and what type of symptoms you're having. Okay. Um, how does the VA rate for GERD um, for compensation? Because I know you, sometimes you have these caps and no and some crazy, you know, different. So how, what, how does it work for GERD? So for GERD, like I said, it's an analogous rating. They normally use the hiatal hernia. And basically, it's you're rated based off of your symptoms. So for there, you can get a 10% rating, a 30% rating, or a 60% rating. So I'm going to start at 60 because you'll see. So 60 would be um, you have symptoms of pain, vomiting, material weight loss, um, uh, blood in like you're vomiting blood, um, you have moderate anemia or other mm -hmm. symptom combinations of severe impairment of health, which is very subjective. Mm -hmm. um, Thirty percent would be persistent recurrent epigastric distress with dy dysphagia, which means trouble swallowing, um, vomiting, regurgitation, um, arm and shoulder pain, and productive considerable impairment of health, which again is very subjective. Um, that's mm -hmm. why you should be very specific about the symptoms that you suffer. And then for a 10% rating, you have to have two or more of the symptoms in the 30% rating. So okay. <laughs> that's why I started from the top and went down. I like it. I like it. So of course, I immediately zoned in on the fact that you did not mention 100%. So you can't get 100% for GERD. You can't get 100% for GERD, but as we always talk about, TDIU, individual unemployability, is always an option. I mean, depending on the severity of your GERD, if you're having severe impairment of health where your GERD is so uh, distressful that you're having to take frequent breaks, too many breaks because you're vomiting or um, you've had so much weight loss or you have such severe anemia that you're fatigued all the time, I could definitely see an argument for individual unemployability based off of a 60% rating for GERD. Okay, great. That's why I always like to ask you if there's an exception because I know that you always have one in the back of your pocket. <laughs> what, what, what doesn't fit in the box? What doesn't apply? Gulf War. So how is Gulf War linked to GERD? How is the Gulf War linked to GERD? So Gulf War syndrome, uh, there a lot of people or a lot of veterans who suffer from it have a lot of gastrointestinal issues because of the exposures. Um, so there are presumptive gastrointestinal conditions like IBS that you can get service connected for. However, to get presumptive service connection for um, one of the gastrointestinal disorders, you have to have a functional gastrointestinal disorder, which means there's abnormal functions of one of the organs. And mm -hmm. so um, GERD isn't considered a functional gastrointestinal disorder. It's considered a structural gastrointestinal disorder. So you can't get presumptive service connection for GERD. However, if your exposures where you served uh, during the Gulf War and you developed GERD, you can definitely still do direct service connection, um, just getting a medical nexus, getting a doctor to state because of his service and his exposures, he developed GERD. So 
as usual, this is so complex and so not simple. <laughs> so I guess my question to you is, if, if I'm a veteran and I served in the Gulf War, and let's say I'm already getting um, service-connected benefits for IBS, but now I'm also having severe GERD, can I come to you and you figure out whether I can get any more for GERD? And if so, how much or how to prove that or what to do? Because I don't under, I don't know how a lay person's going to figure out what I'm getting and what more I, could I get or what I need to do in order to get it. Because you just said a whole lot. <laughs> I mean, I can absolutely try. It uh -huh. is a case by case situation, depending on the facts of your case and your exposures and where um, you were stationed and such. But absolutely, I mean, there are different symptoms with IBS than there is with GERD. So there would be no pyramiding or where you're trying to double dip. Um, mm -hmm. You can definitely be service connected for both. So um, because of the, the complicated nature of it, I would absolutely reach out for help and advice on. Okay. What common issues have you encountered with these types of claims? So like we just discussed the complexity of it, getting a diagnosis specifically that you have GERD, sometimes that can be difficult. Um, but I would say the most difficulty would be trying to figure out how your GERD is related to service. So was it where you served? Was it something um, that happened to you in service? Or is it secondary? Is it a medication that you're taking because of another service-connected issue? So just going through and trying to figure out, okay, I have this condition. I think it's related to service. Now how can I get it service-connected? Okay. All right. Great. All right, Allison. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, we hope you'll join us again. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to visit our website or call our office. Thank you. Thank you.